This is the Married to Doctors podcast, episode number 47. And I think in the Ayurvedic world, we always refer to the Ayurvedic family, and it really is that from the first day of medical school to the day you retire. Welcome to the Married to Doctors podcast. Because we know that being married to a doctor isn't always as glamorous as it sounds, our podcast helps successful homes be happier. We're here to build community, hear your stories, and explore solutions with the experts. Here's your host, Laura McKeldry. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm happy to be here with you today. I'm Laura McKeldry, your host, and we have a really fun episode planned for you today. I wanted to start with a big thank you. A couple of you have given me a monetary donation. That's awesome. I really appreciate it. Many of you have written to me and thanked me for the show, and that's amazing. I hope that I have responded to all of those. If I haven't, please know that I read all of them, and just please forgive me if I haven't responded to all of them. You guys are great. I love what you're doing. I love that the show is helping so many people. It really makes my day every time I I hear a positive comment. And I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for sharing the show with others and for helping it to grow into what it is. So before we jump into the episode, we're going to play a little bit of alphabet soup because (laughs) I got a little bit confused by all of these acronyms and letters and I wanted to just clarify who you're hearing from today. So there's the AMA, which is the American Medical Association. Then there's the AM. AA, which is the American Medical Association Alliance, which is for spouses of physicians. So the AMA is made up for physicians, right? The AMAA is traditionally for the spouses and partners of them and traditionally MD. Then for the DOs, there's the AOA, Okay, which is the American Osteopathic Association. I'm going to give all of you guys a quiz on this. Right? There's the American Osteopathic Association. And then for their partners and spouses, there's the Advocates of American Osteopathic Association or the AAOA. So good golly, lots of A's. Very, very fun there. But Angela is my guest today. She sits on the board of directors for the AAOA, so she is married to a DO, and she serves in that capacity, and on the state level in Michigan, she's actually the president there in Michigan. She's also a high school principal, she's a mother, she has two master's degrees, she's pretty much amazing, and she has a really great story about how her husband, well, I won't spoil it for you, we'll jump right into it after a quick word from our sponsor. I'm so excited to tell you about today's sponsor, which is the Financial Residency Podcast. So Ryan Inman is the host of this podcast, and he was on my show way back on episode number six, which was the truth about doctor families and financial planning. If you didn't get a chance to listen to that one, I really suggest going back and checking that out. Again, that's episode number six. And if you enjoy Ryan, please subscribe to his show, the Financial Residency Podcast. Each week, he brings on great guests and covers a lot of topics in what I think is a really easy to understand format. Brian's married to a physician himself, and he has a passion for helping educate medical families. I highly recommend his show. You can find it on all major podcast apps, or you can find out more at financialresidency.com. Hello, Angela Kalsik. I'm so excited that you're here with us on the Married to Doctors podcast. Yeah, I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself. So my name is Angela, and I am actually um, the vice president of the Advocates for the American Osteopathic Association. So that's the AAOA. And we are the equivalent to the AMA Alliance for the osteopathic world. So my husband is a family doctor resident. He's in his second year residency. I have three kids. I'm a high school principal for a virtual high school here in Michigan, and I have been in education for, gosh, like 16 years now, so I have a very full life. That's awesome, and you started out as a music teacher, is that correct? 
Yeah, um, my husband and I were both band teachers. Um, we both started in the early 2000s and we were band teachers together. That's kind of how we met and got married. We were both band teachers still and this was 2005. So, yeah. I think that's so cool. People have a special gift to be able to teach band <laughs> because there's like multiple instruments, multiple children. I think those people are very gifted indeed. Yeah, I, I don't know. There's no better job in the world than being a band teacher. It, it was amazing. I mean, it came with struggles too. You're working a lot. There are a lot of after school things and it was, it, it was tough to have a family like that. Um, but I don't think it's very different than uh, the time my husband spends in medicine either. So I guess we're just kind of used to it. Right. So tell me what that transition was like as you guys went from band teachers and then out of nowhere, he decides to become a doctor. I mean, this seems like quite um, a jump. No, so. it wasn't out of nowhere. So my husband and I had struggled uh, with infertility, which I'm very open about. So we, you know, we would get pregnant and then have a, a miscarriage and this went on and on. And so we eventually went and had to do in vitro. I think through that process, my husband's eyes were opened at how, what a miracle medicine was and um, what it could do for people. And then in, during that time as well, my sister was going through medical school. It was kind of a very natural thing that happened that he would see what we were going through and then see my sister kind of go through it as well. Uh, in medical school. And just one day he decided, he's, he really said, what do you think about me being a doctor? I said, well, duh, I think you'd be a great doctor. So let's do it. So he took about 18 months. Uh, and this is when we were teaching. He took all the classes that you had to take and took the MCAT and got into several medical schools, MD and DO. Um, and then ultimately we ended up at Michigan State College of Osteopathic Medicine. Wow. I love how supportive you were. How did you or where did you find that strength to be that supportive? Because I'm sure you had to leave your career. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know. I don't think I'm as supportive as people think I am. Because it was, I mean, it's hard. And I think, you know, your listeners probably feel this way too. It's hard to kind of put yourself on hold when you have a career and you have college education and um, you were in an enjoyable position. But I think, you know, in a marriage, to have a healthy marriage, there's a lot of give and take. And my husband is certainly given to me too. Um, it's definitely not just one-sided. So uh, when he decided to do this, we kind of made that decision together that I would, you know, I would definitely keep working and I would find something I really enjoyed still, but allow him to kind of pursue what he wanted to do. And our kids were little at the time. So, and I was working a lot and it kind of just worked out moving back to Michigan and for me to find what I'm doing now, which is a virtual position. Yeah, it's been working out really well. It's, we're very lucky, so, it, but it definitely was both sides. Yeah, so by the time that he was in medical school, then you had been able to have children. You had the kiddos by then? We had, yep, when he started medical school, we had um, twins who were at four years old and then um, a two-year-old. All right. And it sounds like things have been going pretty good for you guys overall. What do you think have been maybe the advantages or the struggles about being non-traditional? I think, you know, the advantages is that we and my husband especially had a real world perspective. He had jobs. Uh, he knew what it was to be a hard worker and he had something to work for. He was working for us. And I think sometimes... Uh, when you're a non-traditional student and you have that end goal in mind and you know you're you are doing this because you have a family and because you love them I mean you can't fail so um, that's kind of where we kind of got through that together yeah and what has it been like for your kiddos to see their dad going through school and residency because they're old enough to kind of get it right yeah they get it um I, I guess we, you know, part of me doing this and agreeing to do this was um, with the stipulation that the kids would be not affected. So whatever we were going to do before with them, was, whether it was piano lessons or make sure they could do soccer, I wasn't going to let any of that change. So I, I really don't think they were affected too much. I think they're very proud of their dad. 
and they think it's really cool that he's a doctor and they tell people that, you know, their dad's a doctor. And so I think it, it, it was, I think it was great for them to see him kind of get through it and see what hard work looks like. And uh, we often talk about, make sure you do things in a, in an order that makes sense so that you don't have to struggle like we did. So I think it's been a good learning experience for them. <laughs> That's interesting. So even though you guys see the advantages of, of doing it in the order that you did, you would still encourage your kids to, <laughs> to take I, a different I, order? <laughs> well, I think, I hope they find their passion before, you know, my husband did. Like, you know, when he started, he was 35. So I hope they find it before 35. I just want them to have a very full, wonderful career where they're just super happy. Yeah. I think that's what we all want for our kiddos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about your medical marriage. Like what do you guys do to, you know, nurture your marriage and strengthen your marriage? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's a struggle. <laughs> um, I think, you know, we are pretty communicative with each other. We talk a lot, but I, I can't say it's not hard. I mean, there, there are times like when he, he's a resident right now. So there are times like this month he's on nights where it's just really hard to maintain that connection um, because he's gone. You know, he comes home in the morning, says good night and sleeps until five and then leaves at six. So I think that's really hard. I, I think it, it, I could give you an easy answer and say we try to do date nights and we try to do this and try to do that. But like, I think it's just, we try to kind of get through day by day and hope that it all comes together at the end. So I think it also helped that, you know, we have been married for a while. This is year 13. So it wasn't, I'm so glad that you know, we had a couple years under our belt before all this started and had that time together to have a good foundation. Yeah, that's good. Do you guys find like any practical techniques? Like, have you found that one scheduling system that works or? Uh, Google Calendar. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, I guess the good thing about my husband is, you know, if he can be there, he's always there. And I think that says a lot for our marriage and for our family. Um, so I never, I can't say I never feel resentful, you know, and, and hurt sometimes when he's busy with work, but I know that if he can be there, he's there. So I guess, you know, when we talk about um, scheduling and making sure that we know what's going on, we keep a same calendar. Um, so like if I have a doctor's appointment, he knows I have a doctor's appointment. If he has a doctor's appointment, I know he has one. Uh, if the kids have orthodox appointments, we're, you know, we're in communication with all that. And every night we do kind of just touch base and say, okay, what well, this is what's happening tomorrow. What, what can you do? And what can I do? And what can we do together? Mm -hmm. So right now that's what's working for us. There's a ca big calendar on our refrigerator. And so even if I don't talk to him, it's there. Yeah, that's awesome. How old are the kids now? 10, 10, and 8. 10, 10, and 8. Okay, so they're starting to probably get a little bit busier in the community and more stuff Yeah, going they're, on. they're pretty busy. Um, they all, our twins play soccer. My daughter runs cross country and um, they um, play violin and choir. And yeah, I mean, they, science, they're going to try Science Olympiad this year. Oh my goodness, robotics, they're doing so a bunch. They do a lot, yeah. yeah. You're like super mom for letting them do all that. My kids will say, can we do this? And I'm like, mm, in our basement. Right. <laughs> like, go play soccer in the basement. Like, I don't want to commit to anything. Yeah, I, you know, but for me, I found that even though like it's a lot of work, it became a really good social activity for me. Mm -hmm. And getting through medical school and part of residency now, I found that to be a really good outlet because all, I made so many friends by doing all that. Like all my very best friends, uh, I call my mom friends. They all are in the same boat. You know, we're all busy. I just found my kind of my quote unquote tribe by doing all of it. So I, I even though it's crazy, it's been really good. So that's kind of some support there in your mom tribe. Let's talk a little bit about the support you have found in the AAOA. Remind us again what that stands for and kind of tell us about like its mission and maybe how yeah. you got involved. Sure. So the AAOA is the Advocates for the American Osteopathic Association. And that is our equivalent to your alliance. So I think the mission, the main mission uh, obviously is to promote and support osteopathic medicine. I think the official one is 
Our mission is to support and promote osteopathic profession. Our advocate network is vast, ranging from physicians to friends to office staff. We cover the globe, creating a strong, close network of people who understand that osteopathic medicine isn't a trend or a passing fad, but is the best type of medical care possible. And that goes with you know the mind, mind, body, and spirit philosophy of osteopathic medicine as well. And I think in the osteopathic world, we've we always refer to the osteopathic family and it really is that from the first day of medical school to the day you retire. And like how I got involved was, you know, literally the first day of my husband's medical school career where I met with, um, at the time, the associate dean's wife and the dean's wife and they were kind of the advisors. Um, and we weren't very big, um, but they welcomed you with open arms and uh, just provided someone to talk to kind of get through medical school and they do that they provided other opportunities for like attending um, the national conference and just getting to go people in the community in the osteopathic world I found that super helpful because I didn't know I mean my sister was a physician but you know no one in my family had ever been a physician besides her and she was just starting out so like when I had questions about what is the what is a comat what is the ACGME what well, how much does that cost again? Why do we have to do that? I could always go and talk to them about it and any other spouses in the group and significant others in the group too. So it provided us maybe some grounding to, you know, why we were here and what it all meant and, and gave us a larger perspective on what was going to happen and why it's all worth it. Um, and then through that, I got involved in our state organization is the uh, advocates for the Michigan Osteopathic Association, the AMOA. And I am actually president of that group right now and found that to be, you know, even a more welcoming group and getting to know people in my state that were also involved on an advocate level. And even though, you know, I have my own career and I do all this other stuff, I, I found it to be uh, important for me to understand what my husband was going through and understand that what osteopathic medicine really was um, to be supportive to him and it's given me support too and then eventually I got involved in the national group and that's been hugely supportive too um, it's it's really good networking uh, for my husband and for me it's just really good to see what's happening at a national level in osteopathic medicine the AOA and AMA are doing great things together with the ACGME merger. And it just, I would have never understood any of that had I not been involved. And I'm so glad that I've had the opportunity. So started local and now I'm at state and national. That's awesome. So people that really have no idea what you're talking about, tell me what do these associations do at the state and national levels? Like if so, you were to show up at a meeting, like what's going on there? I mean, it's a meeting. But we do a lot of really good things, you know, at the state level right now, we're doing a lot of things with mental health and we're working with our MSU Com SAA on promoting health, mental health awareness for the spouses and for the students. And we also work in collaboration with the Yellow Ribbon Suicide Prevention Campaign. For example, right now at the state level, um, at the college as well, we're, we have like six seminars set up, one on finances, one on what it is to go through medical school with children, what it is, how do you resolve conflict resolution? What do you do if you have your own career, but you also want to support your spouses? We have a whole session on what do you do when stuff goes wrong? Like you just, what do you do? You invested your whole life into this and something happens. Um, so we're, we do a lot just to kind of support each other. And with mental health being what it is right now, we want to make sure we address that um, locally and at the state level. So that's what we're doing at the state level. Um, at the national level, we do, I mean, obviously it's a much bigger perspective and we have to kind of think big picture, but at national level, we also do a lot with the suicide prevention campaign. Um, we're actively involved in the AOA Physician Wellness Task Force um, and they're developing modules to better help support people all the way through uh, medical school, through uh, retirement in medicine with their own mental health. We do a lot to support medical students. We um, have a special projects fund where we fund scholarships for osteopathic students, as well as fund different projects all over the country. Um, part of the reason I'm 
able to do what we're able to do at Michigan State was because a couple of years ago we, we were able to get a special project grant from the AAOA, um, which has been hugely supportive. But we help people, you know, all over the country with different projects. So there was a project in uh, Virginia where they were doing thing outreach in the community, providing OMM uh, for pregnant women. There, there is one for a long time in Kirksville where they were doing um, just special project for uh, the community members for Christmas, for families that couldn't afford Christmas gifts. So we do a lot of um, philanthropic things and obviously ultimately we want to support and promote osteopathic medicine. But so we do a lot. Yeah, that sounds really great. Do you need to be a DO or can MDs find this group as well? Or MD I think any, our group is open to all. Um, anyone that wants to support osteopathic medicine, we're in it to win it. You know, like we'll take you. Um, our group, I think, will welcome you with open arms um, anywhere you go. Uh, I think it's really important. You know, I am part of the AMA, but I'm also part of the AOA. As the ACGME thing happens, I think you'll see more of that. But, you know, my husband is in a dually accredited residency. So, mm -hmm. and I've written for Physician Family Magazine, and that's AMA Alliance. So, I think both groups will all welcome e each other with open arms. And I think it's better to work together than separate. Well said. Okay. Where can people find out more about this if they're interested? So our website is advocates for DOs and it's the eight advocates and the number four and then dos.org. Okay. And then you can find all about, you know, our SAAs, which is our student groups, our, our state groups, and then our national group and different events we're doing all over the country. We have a, a 5K coming up in San Diego and all that money goes to, you know, promote scholarships. All right. Super fun. We'll be sure and have those links in the show notes so that people can find, find that resource. I love bringing resources to light for my listeners. I think there's yeah. more out there than I certainly ever knew about. I guess I just wanted to end with one more question I'll throw on you. If someone's having a really bad day today, what would you tell them? Well, a spouse in medicine. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, a spouse um, in medicine. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I think it, it gets better. Like, uh, hashtag gets better is that Kim Blackham that says that. It does get better. I mean, I always thought there'd be never medical school is never going to end. I think it's like the never ending. And I, now I feel like I can't believe my husband's on, you know, in a second year residency. So I think every day, you know, just try to stay positive and know that you keep one foot in front of the other and that it, it will work out. Good. Not perfect, but it does. It does work out. Well, I love your attitude. I love how supportive you've been of your your husband, when he decided to go from band teacher to doctor, <laughs> I find that fascinating. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's probably interesting for his patients, too. He's like, what do you play? You know, <laughs> it's a great everything. <laughs> right, right. That's awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Angela. This has been a great interview, and I really appreciate your time today. Thanks, Laura. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Married to Doctors podcast. Our mission is to make successful homes happier. To learn more or to share your story, visit our website at marriedtodoctors.com.